Hello everyone and welcome back to another season of Discovery Hunter video. Today we will be covering Phase 2 BIS for ranged and melee weaving hunters, talent builds, and the runes you will want to use. As always, with my BIS guides, we will start by taking a look over the gear set as a whole, and then break down each individual gear slot and look at the best option, as well as cover a few good alternatives for each slot. A quick point to bring up is that all dungeons past Alderman will be logged for Phase 2 and this has been confirmed, so gear such as Mason's Fraternity Ring from Zulfarak will not be obtainable. Taking a look at the gear set overall, we have Glowing Nero Linked Cal for the Helm, Nomergan Peace Officer's Torque for the Neck, Trog Slayer's Pauldrons for the Shoulders, Prototype Parachute Cloak for the Cape, Blaze Wind Breastplate for the Chest, Forest Stalker's Bracers for the Bracers, Gyromatic Macro Adjuster for the Melee Weapon, Fingers of Arcane Accuracy for the Gloves, Dark Vision Girdle for the Belt, Electromantic Chasses for the Legs, Electromantic Ground Sabatons for the Boots, Ring of the Underwood and Iron Spy's Eye for the Rings, Gyromatic Experiment 420B for the first trinket, Avenger's Void Pearl for the second trinket, and finally Thermoplug's Custom Blaster for the ranged weapon. Moving on to the talent builds now. Before we break down each gear slot individually, we have two potential talent builds to play around with. As we learn more about Phase 2 and Testo boss fights and the new runes, we may see some new talent builds, so for now these are the best two potential options. The first talent build will be your standard 3100 Beastmastery build. Nothing special or exciting about this build, but if boss kill times become extremely quick then this might be the best option for the phase. The second option is a 2308 hybrid build, which depending on how melee weaving works out, this might actually be the better overall option, but that's yet to be seen. Next we have the runes to look at. For the chest rune, we of course still have aspect of the line as our best option. For the leg rune, this choice may change or differ depending on how things play out in Omergon, but the best expected rune is still flanking strike, assuming melee weaving isn't completely dead in phase 2. The fights in Omergon are a lot more ranged friendly with long periods of time where you can stand still, then sniper training may actually be a good option as well for those that don't enjoy melee weaving. For the glove rune, Chimera Shot is still expected to perform the best. For the waist rune, you have two choices. Melee Specialist is the ideal option assuming you melee weave, and it should be quite powerful. However, if you just want to play a full-time ranged hunter, then you can opt for Steady Shot. While not the most powerful rune, especially only at 60% ranged weapon damage, it will be a good filler ability. Last but not least, we have the Boots rune. Invigoration is definitely the best option for this rune slot. With this rune, you should practically never run out of mana on any boss fight in this phase. Dual wield specialization may see some use, but it will require some more testing first. And lastly, we have Trap Launcher. This rune unfortunately is trash for PvE, as Immolation Trap and Explosive Trap don't scale in Classic WoW Season of Discovery, and it's not even worth using traps in your rotation in the first place. This rune was pretty much only ever going to see any use in PvP. Alright, so now that the talents and runes have been covered, let's move into the gear slots themselves. Starting with the helms, we have Glowing Nero Linked Cowl. This is our new leatherworking crafted epic for phase 2 and is by far the best option. If you aren't leatherworking by now, I highly suggest you pick up the profession. If you really don't want to use leatherworking, or your hunter is simply just an alt with gathering professions, then you can opt for Marksman Scope Visor as a great alternative, or even continue to use Twilight Slayer's Cowl or Artemis Cowl. For the neck we have Nomergon Peace Officer's Torque. This neck will most likely be highly contested and it may take you a long time to even see a drop. So Sentinel's Medallion as Alliance or Scout's Medallion as Horde is a really great alternative to aim for considering it only requires Warsun Gulch reputation to acquire and you should have had that finished in Phase 1. Moving on to the shoulders we have Trog Slayer Pauldrons. These shoulders are quite a bit better than any alternative but if you're unlucky with them dropping then you can pick up a few decent alternatives such as Mantle of the Cunning Negotiator or Revelosh's Spalders. Nice scape shoulders are also a great cheap alternative as you can have them crafted by a leather worker and there are only a few agility behind the raid options. For the cloak we have prototype parachute cloak. It's by far the best option considering the next best alternative is dark hooded cape which is already selling for upwards of 600 gold depending on your server so it's not really a realistic option in my opinion and I definitely can't recommend spending that amount of gold on one. Opting for either a Parachute Cloak or Imperial Cloak are much more reasonable alternatives while you wait for your Prototype Parachute Cloak to drop. Now for the chest. As mentioned in my pre-biz video, 
Blaze when Breastplate is by far the best option in Phase 2, and quite a bit better than any alternative available to us. This quest can be soloed as an experienced hunter, so keep that in mind, and so far I haven't heard anything regarding the quest Tremors of the Earth being locked out of Phase 2, so hopefully it remains. If it does happen to get removed for Phase 2, you can opt for a few alternatives, such as Quill Word Harness or Electromantic Chainmail. I personally wouldn't worry about Quill Word Harness that much as it's a rare BOE and it will not be cheap if you find one on the auction house. For the Bracers, we have two options in Phase 2, both of which are extremely close to each other. The first option is Forest Stalker's Bracers, so if you're already exalted with Warsong Gulch Rep from Phase 1, then I would recommend just running these Bracers for the whole phase. On the other hand, if you hate PvPing and you don't have the rep, you will want to aim for experimental aim stabilizers. For alternatives, you can look at Revelosh's Arm Guards, Imperial Leather Bracers, or Dusky Bracers. For the gloves, you will want to pick up Fingers of Arcane Accuracy, but the alternatives, such as Machinist Gloves and your Void Touch Leather Gloves from Phase 1 are both very close and good options as well, so I wouldn't stress about this gear slot all that much. Bonk Maestro's Hand Guards are also a decent alternative, but I wouldn't take them over another class that can take advantage of the mace or fist weapon bonus. For the belt, Dark Vision Girdle is the best option, but similar to the glove slot, it's one of the smaller upgrades of this phase. There are a few great alternatives you can pick up if you're unlucky with Dark Vision Girdle dropping, such as Skullduggery Waistband, and if you have excess gold to spend, you could keep an eye out on the auction house for Ogron Sash if you find one for a decent price. For the legs, we have the first piece of the Phase 2 gear sets. Electromantic Shoss are the best option, however by themselves they're sort of lackluster. Once you acquire the boots as well for the 2 piece set bonus and get your additional 24 attack power, they will be much better. Nimble Trip Runner Dungarees, Petrol Spill Pants, and Basilisk Hide Pants are some great standalone alternatives until you can get your 2 piece tier bonus. Now, as mentioned a second ago, Electromantic Grounding Sabatons are the best boots for Phase 2. Paired with the legs to unlock the additional 24 attack power, these will be much better than any other option. The best alternative is Swamp Walker boots, but being a rare BOE, I really don't recommend wasting your gold on them. Pratt's Handcrafted Boots, Imperial Leather Boots, or Dusky Boots are all much more reasonable and easier to obtain alternatives. Now for the rings. As mentioned at the start of the video, Zulfarak will not be available for Phase 2, so we can forget about Mason's Fraternity Ring. Ring of the Underwood and Iron Spine's Eye are the absolute best options, however there are a few really good close alternatives. Iron Spine's Eye is a drop from a rare spawn in Scarlet Monastery Graveyard, so you can solo farm this ring. However, with the Ring of the Underwood being a rare BOE, you may want to offer something cheaper or easier. Falcon's Hook, Hypercharged Gear of Devastation, and Protector's Band as Alliance or Legionnaire's Band as Horde are all great options. For the trinkets, our first new trinket is Gyromatic Experiment for 20B. This trinket increases our attack speed and also provides 18 attack power, so it's definitely the best option considering there are very few alternatives in this phase. Tiger Blood Talisman from the Stranglethorn Veil PvP event is simply trash and not worth ever picking up or using. Now for the second trinket, you're just going to continue using Avengers Void Pearl from Black Fathom Deeps. Alright, now we have the weapons to look at. Starting with the melee weapons, we have Gyromatic Macro Adjuster. Assuming melee weaving isn't totally dead, and I hope it isn't, you will want to use this polearm above anything else. There really aren't many great alternatives this phase, and Manslayer is a decent alternative, but yet again being a rare BOE, it most likely won't be cheap. If you don't care about melee weaving at all, you could look into one-handed options such as Nordic Longshank, Sentinel's Blade as Alliance or Scout's Blade as Horde, and Vanquisher's Sword. And lastly, we have the most important gear slot for ranged hunters. For our ranged weapon, we have another great epic to look forward to this phase. Thermoplug's Custom Blaster is definitely the best option. Unfortunately, it isn't a little slower, but what can we do? We're just going to have to deal with the 2.9 speed. Now for alternatives, I know everybody will be curious about Bow of Searing Arrows and if it's really worth picking up or looking at buying, and I can say for certain it is absolutely not going to be worth the price tag that people are asking for it. Siraji did some testing on Era, and the chance on hit bonus is just absolutely terrible, so do yourself a favor and don't blow the 1k gold or whatever people are asking for it. Some better and more realistic options are Mithril Heavy Bore Rifle 
or a sniper rifle of agility if you can find one. And before we forget, the new Stranglethorn Veil vale PvP event will be bringing us a much bigger and better quiver and ammo pouch, so make sure you do your PvP event often to get this quiver as fast as possible. We've now covered absolutely everything you need to know for Phase 2 Biss as a Hunter, and what gear you should be aiming for by the time you hit level 40 and start raiding Gnomergan. I hope you found this video helpful, and if you did, drop a like and subscribe to the channel. I'm sure we will be seeing a handful of nerfs of the Hunter class early on in the phase, and things will change rapidly, so make sure you have notifications turned on, as I will be keeping you all up to date with the most accurate information as it releases. Also feel free to join my Discord, and follow me on Twitch. I will have a link to both in the video description below. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.